The Commission has asked the FAO to, to produce a report on the state of the world's biodiversity for food and agriculture. The report will seek to provide an integrated overview of the contribution of biodiversity fruit, food and agriculture to global food and nutrition security and to the livelihoods and well-being of rural communities through a synthesis of existing sectoral reports as well as additional information. The report will go beyond the scope of other assessments prepared by the Commission by taking into account linkages between the different sectors of genetic resources and wider perspectives on biodiversity within or affecting agricultural systems. The report will address the following key issues. The overall status of biodiversity conservation and its use for food and nutrition security, ecosystem functioning, and sustainability. Trends in the conservation and use of biodiversity for food and agriculture, and the effects of the major drivers of change. And finally, ways that we can improve the conservation and use of biodiversity for food and agriculture to enhance its contributions to food and nutrition security, ecosystem functioning, sustainability, and the improved livelihoods of farmers, pastoralists, forest dwellers, and fisher folk. In conducting this analysis, state of the world reports and preparation guidelines were analyzed for information relevant to the intended scope and content of the state of the world's biodiversity for food and agriculture report. Preparation guidelines, which were available for all sectors, provided a sense of the information that could be expected and the sector reports themselves presented models for the integration of diverse and variable information, as well as approaches to synthesizing and supplementing content from country reports. A small sample of country reports were analyzed across all sectors to provide additional information on the forest sector, as well as to assess the variability of information between sectors and what challenges might arise in synthesis. It also provided a foundation for identifying the information gaps, as well as the major differences in sector content. Additional sources of relevant information were compiled that might further contribute to the information gaps identified. These included thematic studies to the reports, other global reporting processes, such as the CBD, GBO, national reports, and clearinghouse documents, and a wide range of international databases. From this analysis, we can conclude that reports are comprehensive in considering the status and trends of biodiversity for food and agriculture, and will be a strong source of information on status and trends that traditionally fall within sector reporting. These include such things as species and subspecies evaluated for different characteristics and genetic diversity, threatened species, breeds, and subpopulations, the extent of import and export of different crops and products, and the production data for different agricultural goods along with others. However, the associated components of biodiversity for food and agriculture, which are not traditionally linked with a particular sector, is less widely available. Associated biodiversity encompasses microorganisms, such as mycorrhizae, soil microbes, plankton, phytoplankton, ruminant intestinal microfauna, invertebrates that affect crop and animal production, such as pests and predators, soil invertebrates, pollinators, birds and non-domesticated animals, feral species, and the wild plants that occur with and around agricultural production systems, such as weeds, hedges, riparian species, etc. Consistent perspectives on cross-sectoral linkages in status and use were also found to be missing. Listed are in, in the bottom of these slides are um, a sampling of some of the additional content, but not a comprehensive overview. The reports provide some additional information on drivers and threats affecting biodiversity for food and agriculture, but are not a comprehensive source of this information. For instance, they can provide examples of the ways in which major drivers contribute to genetic erosion or otherwise compromise biodiversity for food and agriculture. And the reports may also be used to identify high priority threats and drivers as reported by countries and sectors, which can help to establish local or emerging threats and trends that may differ from the global drivers. However, information on drivers, changes, and threats across the country reports is largely descriptive and anecdotal and can potentially present challenges in cross-sectoral analyses. The focus tended to be on those drivers of immediate concern, with few instances of anticipated or projected changes. 
information on drivers affecting associated components of biodiversity was not available. Drivers may be a topic for which external information is extremely helpful in supplementing um, the information that countries can provide. From the contributions of previous international assessments, such as the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and the reports to the CBD's global, global Biodiversity Outlook, threats and drivers to changes in the biodiversity of natural areas as well as managed ones are well established. The reports will be a strong source of information on the state of sustainable use of biodiversity for food and agriculture, which is inclusive of initiatives such as the use of genetic resources and breeding and research, the designation of reserves specifically for the conservation and use of genetic resources, as well as efforts to commercialize underutilized species and multiple uses of different agricultural resources. As well, they can contribute um, information on the contribution of biodiversity for food and, of food and agriculture to food security and rural poverty alleviation, uh, which is mentioned in most reports, including the role of local varieties in food security, opportunities through new industries like product development and ecotourism, as well as dependency on traditional crops and medicines. The contribution of biodiversity for of food and agriculture to sustainable agricultural practices and sustainable intensification. Um, sorry is provided to some degree in the reports as well, including initiatives such as agroecology, climate smart agriculture, integrated pest management, organic agriculture, etc. However, um, the information was largely descriptive where it was available and varied heavily between reporting countries and sectors, particularly information relevant to ecosystem services. There was some information on the use of biodiversity of food and agriculture by emerging industries and on subsistence and recovery strategies that depended upon biodiversity food and agriculture. The reports contain much information on national programs and initiatives. I think I finally caught up with my slide. <laughs> Collaborations and partnerships at different levels, information management systems, and capacities or resources that are available and lacking. Gaps include information on the mechanisms that drive or constrain collaboration between sectors and cross-cutting initiatives, as well as landscape and area-based initiatives and policies or interventions that pertain to associated components of biodiversity. Certain challenges will necessarily arise from bringing together such vastly different information to gain a bit bigger picture of the overall state of biodiversity for food and agriculture. This analysis only draws upon the reports that were available at the time, which is why in the following slides the aquatic sector information is not included. Uh, one of the issues um, that will arise is that of assigning appropriate indicators to provide a descriptive overview of different units. I'll leave this issue for Matt to take up in the following presentation. Another issue is differences in uh, available sector information, sometimes on the account of the information not being relevant or um, traditionally covered by reporting processes. Finally, um, there's a real risk in um, double counting efforts if you take an approach of just compiling the individual reports of different sectors and trying to gain a, an idea of the bigger picture. The prospective challenge will be in synthesizing this information. The categories used by each of the sectors didn't directly correspond with the majority being sector specific with respect to the units of analysis, for example, breeds, varieties, and progeny. For instance, of about 145 total quantified topics that were found in the reports between the three sectors, only eight were um, corresponding with the same units across all three sectors. However, this does not reflect a large amount of categorically similar data that was classified by different units. And with some further synthesis and generalization of topics into broader categories, further analysis is possible. In comparing the biggest gaps found in each sector, again, there were few overlaps indicated here with the, um, the colored boxes. And this suggests that sectors will need to consider those issues that have historically not been a part of their reporting processes. So returning now to the key issues of the proposed report, we have a sense of what we have 
and what we are missing. Providing information on the state of associated biodiversity resources is a challenge, but also a major opportunity of the report. There is at present, to the best of our knowledge, no existing country framework in which to collect information on associated biodiversity resources. And global efforts to compile this information would fall short in capturing all of the regional variation between different climate and eco zones within a single country. One of the biggest opportunities in the preparation of the State of the World Biodiversity for Food and Agriculture report will be that of obtaining a global perspective on the overall state of ecosystem function and the state of use of genetic resources in the provision of ecosystem services. Associated biodiversity plays a central role with respect to ecosystem function and its contribution will need to be included in some way. As we heard emphasized by this morning's wonderful speakers, agriculture is fundamentally dependent upon both biodiversity and ecosystem services. Understanding the direct link between these elements and how they play out from the national to global level can facilitate sustainable, scalable agricultural production to meet the needs of a growing population on less land. And surely this is something we can consider a win-win situation. Biodiversity for food and agriculture is, a whole, is, as a whole, greater than the sum of its parts. It encompasses not only the species and subspecies, breeds, progenies, and varieties under production, but the production systems in which they occur, as well as the relationships of these production systems uh, within the broader ecosystems. While our understanding of the complex interlinkages between organisms and wild and managed systems has grown immensely in past decades, our growing understanding only reiterates how much we still have left to learn. Frameworks and possible entry points for discussing the information gaps identified by this analysis are introduced in an information document that will be, produced, that will be presented uh, and discussed by the Commission next week. And thank you so much for your time.